Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the most common questions that I get asked and that is, what is the difference between Cypress and Webdriver IO? And which one should you pick? Well, it's your lucky day because in this video, we're going to be covering just that. Everything from top features to framework limitations to browser support and lot more. So make sure to stick till the end as I will tell you which one is better for you to pick for your next automation project. All right, so before we get started, if you haven't hit the subscribe and the like button already, make sure to pause this video and hit the like button as well as the subscribe button, as that's how I know that you guys are really enjoying the content. Okay, then let's get started. So both Cypress and Webdriver IO are end-to-end -end automation frameworks, and both of them are extremely popular frameworks in the market at the moment. Now we're going to run through the list of differences and similarities between both of them. But keep in mind, it is a comprehensive list. So I will be going through it quickly so that we can cover it all and not make this a really long video. So the first item we're going to talk about is the language support. Both Cypress and Webdriver IO supports JavaScript and TypeScript. So if you're interested in writing tests in JavaScript and TypeScript, then both Cypress and Webdriver IO supports that. However, if you want to write your test in any other language, then probably Cypress and Webdriver IO is not the right option for you. So the next thing we're going to look at is GitHub Stars. So if you don't know already, GitHub Stars is just a way for someone to show support for that particular project. So in this case, you can see Cypress has 38,000 GitHub Stars versus Webdriver IO on the has 7.5,000. The next number we're going to look at is the number of NPM downloads. Here you can see Cypress has 3.5 million NPM downloads and this is weekly versus Webdriver IO has close to 1 million downloads weekly. So clearly between GitHub stars and NPM downloads, you can see Cypress is a little bit more popular than Webdriver IO. Now keep in mind, this is not really the deciding factor in terms of which one to go with, but it's still something you should be aware of. The next one we're gonna look at is releases. So for both Cypress and Webdriver IO, both of them are actively maintained. And as you can see, they have almost weekly and bi-weekly releases. So which is a really good thing because you wanna be using a project that is actively maintained. All right, now we're going to talk about some of the key features of Webdriver IO as well as Cypress. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the setup. So for both Cypress and Webdriver IO, the setup is really beginner friendly. They have really good documentation and you can easily go ahead and set up your project under 30 minutes for both Cypress and Webdriver IO. The one thing that I'm going to give over here to Webdriver IO is when you're setting up your project, you do have some customization options versus with Cypress, you do not really get that. However, keep in mind, this is something Cypress did it intentionally because they wanted to make the experience easy for them. And later on, you can go ahead and do customizations as needed. But if that's something you need at the very get go, Webdriver IO gives you that. The next option we have is the test readability. In this case, Cypress is a little better than Webdriver IO. When you're using Cypress, the overall test readability is a little bit better and it's easier for any new person to come in and read the test. Versus with Webdriver IO, with the new chain that they made with async await, it's a little bit hard for someone who's not from JavaScript background to understand how async await works and how does the syntax is actually working. So in this particular category, I'm going to have to say Cypress is doing a little bit better. The next thing we're going to look at is dependency with Selenium Webdriver. As you know, most of the major frameworks out there are dependent on Selenium Webdriver. However, that's not the case with Cypress. Cypress does not use Selenium Webdriver whatsoever. Instead, they have built their own architecture which runs within the browser. And that gives you some really good advantages such as your tests are running faster, it's not making any API calls, and so on. Versus with Webdriver IO, it is using Webdriver behind the scenes, but it uses a custom implementation of Webdriver. So if you have heard that Selenium Webdriver tests are flaky and it takes long time to run, that's not really the case with Webdriver IO because they're using custom implementation and they make sure that your tests are stable and they're fast to run. So if you're still happy using Selenium Webdriver and take advantage of Selenium Webdriver features, then Webdriver IO is the right option. However, if you do not care about that, then Cypress is a clear winner here. The next thing is the interactive test runner. When you're running your test, do you have a test runner option? In this case, Cypress is clearly way better and that's something that everyone loves. It has a fancy test runner, which gives you option of time travel, hot reload, selecting the test and running it within through the test runner and so on. Versus with Webdriver IO, you have a plain old CLI test runner, which you use to execute your test. So clearly Cypress is a winner over here. The next thing is built-in wait and retries. If you're familiar with web automation, you know that your test gets flaky and sometimes you just want to simply read on them. This is supported by both Cypress and Webdriver IO. It makes sure for your elements to load in the DOM, then only it goes ahead and interact with it. 
Same thing if your test fails, you have an option to retry the test so that you know that your tests are actually failing or it's just one of the flaky scenarios. The next thing we're going to talk about is the API testing. With Cypress, you have a default support of API testing. They provide you HTTP request, which you can just use right away. Versus with WebDriver.io, it's not really supported, but you can use external libraries such as Axios or SuperTest and go ahead and set it up on your own as well. So those were some of the key features of Cypress and WebDriver.io. Finally, the last thing I want to mention is WebDriver.io is 100% free versus Cypress is only partially free. And oftentimes that makes a huge difference when you're picking up a framework. Now let's talk about the limitations of Cypress and WebDriver.io. So I'm going to go ahead with the Cypress list first, and then we're going to talk about WebDriver.io. So the very first limitation, which is one of the biggest limitation of Cypress is the limited browser support. It supports Chromium family and Firefox. However, it does not have support for Safari, which is a huge limitation if you have users that are actually using Safari for your particular website or application. The next one is the cross origin restriction. What that means is, let's say if you're running a test, and if you want to switch from one domain to another domain, such as from google.com to apple.com, you cannot do that within the same test. You're going to have to create two separate tests. One is going to Google, another one is going to apple.com. Now, if you're not familiar how that works, this can be painful for you if you're trying to figure it out on your own. And the next limitation is the multi-tab and multi-window are not supported. So if you want to switch from one tab to another tab or one window to another window or work with multiple sessions, that is simply not supported by Cypress. And the next thing is that Cypress does not have a built-in parallelization. Now you can go ahead and run your test in parallel in multiple browser instances. However, that's only supported through their Cypress dashboard. And this is one of the paid features that they do. They do have a free option over here, which is I think 500 test results or so. But to be honest, if you're working in a large organization, that's not gonna be enough for you. So in that case, you have to opt in for their paid features to decide the number of test runs you want to do if you wanna take advantage of built-in parallelization. And finally, I think Cypress in general is not as customizable compared to WebDriver.io. Now, I know that some of you guys will say that there are a lot more plugins and stuff that you can use. I agree, but I think WebDriver.io in comparison is still more customizable than Cypress, specifically when you're setting up your framework as well as you want to add in some services. Okay, so now let's talk about WebDriver.io limitations. Now, the first one I've already talked about in the previous slide, which is async await syntax can be confusing for beginners. So with WebDriver IO, ever since they have made a switch from synchronous mode to asynchronous mode, they have started using the async await syntax. And this syntax can be confusing if you're not coming from the JavaScript world. And the next one is to kind of support Cypress here, while WebDriver IO has a lot more customization options. Personally, if you're a little bit on a beginner side, all this customization can be overwhelming as you have to go ahead and do all of this customization as this configuration on your own. So I would say while Cypress does not have as many customization options, I think it is still good because built in, you have certain set of features that are already available to you versus with WebDriver.io, you kind of have to plug and play with depending on whatever feature you need for your particular framework. Another limitation with WebDriver.io is it is comparatively difficult to debug your test. With Cypress, if your test failed, you can just take advantage of the time travel feature of your test runner versus with WebDriver.io, you do not really have a similar option. Now, they do provide multiple debugging options, but it's not as intuitive as Cypress. And finally, WebDriver.io does not really provide any paid feature. While well, that can be a good thing, but at the same time, if you want to take advantage of, let's say, commercial support or some paid feature, they do not simply provide that because it's a fully 100% open source project. Okay, so now let's talk about the browser support. I didn't mention that for Cypress and WebDriver.io. Now with Cypress, as I said, they support Chromium family, that is Chrome, Edge, Electron, Brave, as well as they support Firefox. But with WebDriver.io, they support all the major browsers. You have Chrome, you have Firefox, Microsoft Edge, Internet Explorer, and the biggest one is Safari. Now keep in mind, this can be a huge deal breaker for companies that want to run their tests in Safari. Unfortunately, Cypress does not support it at the moment. But if in case Cypress do support Safari in future, it's gonna be a huge plus for them. Now moving on to mobile support, with Cypress, it only supports web, and this kind of sucks. It would have been amazing if they can support mobile applications as well. Unfortunately, it is built to support web applications only. However, with WebDriver IO, as I mentioned, really customizable, you can actually support mobile as well using the help of Appium. And I'm going to do a shameless plug here. If you're interested in learning WebDriver IO with Appium, I have a brand new course on Udemy. I will add the link below. It is highest rated at the moment, it has great reviews. So do go ahead and make sure to check that out if this is something you're interested in. I will add the coupon link in the description below for you guys. Now let's go into a little bit of technical details with Cypress and WebDriver.io. 
In terms of locator support, Cypress supports only CSS selector by default. However, if you do want export, you can use an external plugin to set that up. But by default, you only get CSS selectors. Versus with WebDriver IO, you have CSS as well as export available right away. The next one is the iframe support. With Cypress, as I mentioned, cross origin is a pain. So if you have an iframe, which is let's say cross domain, it's going to be really difficult to work with. Or if you have a simply iframe, which is in the same domain, it's still a little bit hard to set that up with Cypress. And you have to do a little bit of workaround for that particular thing. Versus with WebDriver IO, it's really easy to switch to iframe versus switch back to your actual DOM as well. Then the next thing is the Shadow DOM. Shadow DOMs are getting really popular nowadays and it's being used for a lot of websites. The good thing is this is being supported by both Cypress and WebDriver IO. So you don't really have to worry about in terms of Shadow DOMs. The next thing we're gonna look at is network interception. So if you're not familiar with network interception, what this lets you do is mock or stub your network calls so that you can return a XYZ response that you need for that particular page or that particular component. So both Cypress and WebDriver IO supports that. Cypress has a built-in feature versus WebDriver IO, you can configure it using an external service. And finally, we're gonna look at Google Lighthouse performance report. If you're not familiar with Google Lighthouse, it simply allows you to get a performance report of your website. Now this is something supported by both Cypress and WebDriver IO. With WebDriver IO, in this case, it's a built-in feature. All you need to do is set up your DevTool service. Versus with Cypress, you can use an external plugin to set that up. Now, finally, we're gonna go over some miscellaneous features. The first thing we're gonna talk about is test framework. So with Cypress, you have by default support of Mocha test framework. If you do want to use Cucumber, you can use an external plugin for that. But with WebDriver IO, you have Mocha, Jasmine, and Cucumber, all three of them built in with WebDriver IO framework. The next one, which I kind of already talked about, is parallelization. Cypress does support that, but it is only possible with a paid plan. Versus with WebDriver IO, it is built in supported. The next thing is reporting. Cypress has reporters such as the spec reporter, mocker reporter, or any types of reporter that Mocha supports. Or you can go ahead and do your custom reporter as well. And with WebDriver IO, you have spec, allure, report portal, and pretty much 10, 15 different types of reporter as well, which you can go ahead and check it out on the WebDriver IO website. So you get a lot more options over here with WebDriver IO compared to Cypress. The next one is CI/CD. I would say this is something both Cypress and WebDriver IO supports. I won't really say there's one better than the other. You have to do configuration for both of them anyways, and they have good documentation online already. So you can go to their website to actually take a look at that. And the next one is the documentation. In this case, I will say Cypress is a clear winner. Cypress has a really intuitive and opinionated documentation, which is amazing for beginners. And this is something I feel they do a great job at. Versus with WebDriver IO, they have pretty good documentation as well. But in this case, I'm gonna say Cypress is a clear winner. Now let's talk about community support. Well, both Cypress and WebDriver IO have a growing community and they're both active on Gitter and GitHub. And you've already seen in terms of popularity, I've shown you the numbers with Cypress is a little bit more compared to WebDriver IO, it's not as much. All right, so that was all the major differences and similarities between Cypress and WebDriver IO. And as I promised at the end of this video, I said I will be telling you who the winner is. Well, the answer is, it depends. I know, I know that this is not the answer you were looking for, but look, I think what you should rather be asking is, what are the requirements? I would say both are winner in this case, it just really depends on what the requirements are. To give you an example, if your project requirement entails that you need to set up your automation for web as well as mobile and the framework should be the same, in that case, WebDriver IO is a clear winner. Or maybe you wanna run your tests in Safari, once again, WebDriver IO is a clear winner. However, if you have a requirement where you only want to run your test on Chrome or Firefox and it is only a web application, then in this case, I'm gonna say Cypress is probably a better option for you. So to conclude this video, guys, if you have to pick one, make sure you definitely ask this question, what are the requirements? And based on the requirement, go through the list that I just went over. And accordingly, whichever the team thinks is a good option, you can pick that one. But please, please do not pick one just because it's popular or you know how to work with it. With that, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't clicked the like button, make sure to click that to show your support for this video. Also, let me know in the comments below which framework will you be picking for your next automation project and why. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I will see you all in the next one.